Hi, today we're going to be talking about the P226. This is one of my favorite semi-automatic pistols in 9mm. I own about four of them. I've been a big SIG fanboy for the longest time. It's actually the first pistol that I ever bought. Not this one in particular, but a P226 uh, Combat. Now this is a West German P226 made in 1994. And the way you can tell it's a West German is by the different construction of the slide. This slide starts as a carbon steel sheet metal um, that's folded and then they weld the nose on and insert a steel breech block that's held in with this pin. Now you can tell whether it's a West German or a milled slide when you don't see an external extractor. So this has an internal extractor. It makes it, um, because it has an internal extractor, it's definitely one of these folded slides, which is either made in West Germany and later on after the unification in, in Germany. Um, why do people like these? I think people gravitate towards it because it's just people like collecting things. Um, they have a different look. They handle slightly differently. Um, usually they don't come with the rail on the bottom of the frame. People just like to collect these sort of things. And, you know, this is a collector's channel. So we're going to talk about how, why I collect this or what I've collected. So I'm going to show you another P226 in just a little bit, but um, that's, that's, that's most of the history of one of these, these pistols. Now, there's always kind of been this debate between the milled slide versus the carbon steel slide. So here is a milled slide. This is not a P226. I have a milled slide P226, but I don't have it with me right now. Um, but this is a P229. You can see the external extractor. Um, is there a really big difference? I don't think so. Um, these guns have been shown through history to be very, very reliable. Um, I would say probably the milled ones are a little bit stronger. These are blued carbon steel. So the corrosion resistance of the nitron stainless steel ones are probably, it's probably better. Um, and just note that, you know, the Navy SEALs use both of these guns. They use these old West German models, but when they transition to the uh, Mark 24 Mod Zero and the Mark 25, those, um, the changes that they made to it where they phosphate coated things and then they added the milled um, stainless steel slide. So most of the parts on here that are not the aluminum are uh, typically blued on this gun and you know Navy SEALs probably need something that's a little bit more um, corrosion resistant. So I can see why they may have made the trade but I think they also still have a pretty, um, they probably have a lot of respect still for this uh, folded steel slide. So. Um, just through history, people have been using these and they, you know, they last a long time. I would not hesitate to buy either of them. If you like collecting older guns like I do, or you just like the look of the West Germans, you know, that's why they're there. Now, a PSA, right? Sig Sauer makes a, the, the 40th anniversary of the P226 just happened within the last year. They are making an anniversary model. So you'll see some of these anniversary models and they're kind of hard to spot initially if you don't know what you're looking for. And they typically come with this yellow box. So I own one of these original yellow boxes. The dimensions of the yellow box, it's a lot thinner than the, the, the reproduction one. They made it look like it, but it's not the same size box. And this Sig Sauer uh, P226, this 40th anniversary gun, it's an abomination. I recommend fully do not buy this gun. Right? They're selling it for $1,200. I would say either buy a Mark 25, which is you know this identical gun that the, the Navy SEALs ordered um, before they replaced it with the Glock 19, or if you're really interested in the legacy or the um, kind of nostalgia of the P226, get a West German model. You'll save money. The West German models start about $600, and if you want a like new mint one, maybe $1,200, the same that, uh, the same price that Sig Sauer is selling their anniversary models. The other reason you shouldn't get the anniversary model, it's not true to what the original was. All they did was they took a frame and they removed the rail. The slide is still a milled slide. It's not one of these folded slides, so it doesn't look right. And they try to recreate this um, grip. Now, Hogue makes some nice grips that are made out of G10. I feel like those, they're not exactly the same, but I think I think they 
they do a good job at getting close. These are obviously made out of plastic. They weren't made out of G10. G10 is kind of a new trend. But Sig Sauer, in, the, in their infinite wisdom for their 40th anniversary, decided to make the, um, the grips out of aluminum. I think I think they're just getting the hoe grips, but like, why are you putting the aluminum ones on there? They just they don't look right at all, and I feel like the grips should not be aluminum. They're just holding like this kind of piece of metal. So, anyway, if you get anything out of this video, do not buy the 40th anniversary. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the West German Sigs and what to look for and what price to pay for it. Again. Do not buy the 40th anniversary one. Get a original West German or just buy a new production Mark 25 or something like that. Okay, so enough about this one. I'm gonna show you another P226 that I recently acquired. So here it is. You'll notice that you saw some, some flashes of red. So this is a SIG arms box. So SIG used to, or not used to, they sell guns in red boxes. What do the red boxes mean? So it's a little bit of a secret, um, but if you know, you know. So these red boxes, they're made in different versions. Um, they're like, uh, they have another type of box and it's also red. These are refurbished pistols. So typically when you think of something that's refurbished, you kind of try to avoid it. You don't really want a refurbished bike or refurbished console like video game console you want a new one right sig sour pt26 is they're they're time tested they're very very reliable so if you get a pistol that's old right if you want a west german it's going to be a used gun almost always unless it's someone that put it in their closet then you're going to send uh you're going to spend an exorbitant amount of uh, money but these are used pistols that were either used by the police or given back to sig and sig has refurbished them so this is kind of the best of both worlds. It's used, but then um, armorers at SIG have gone into it and changed out the springs and made sure that it works great, right? So part of the like risk of getting a used gun is that there's no guarantee that it's going to work. It's like doesn't have any micro fractures. You don't know what someone did with the gun. In this case, it's been kind of tested by SIG. So I think these red boxes are kind of a secret, but if you see them, they're a great deal. They're usually, quite affordable and uh, you're getting a gun that's kind of been looked over. Okay, so enough about that. What do we have here? This looks like another P226 West German and you'll be exactly right, but it is slightly different for people that have a keen eye. Now the slide has a slightly different slide cut on it. The other 226 that I have, it's rounded at the top and this one has a angled cut this is a earlier p226 okay so besides me liking p226s and owning multiple things you know that's what collectors do you know you're a collector when you own basically the same thing twice right i am willing to probably buy another one of these in exact configuration if it was one serial number away i'd probably buy it still i just love this gun a lot but why do i like this particular one Okay, the reason I like this, all right, it's a little bit of a story time. So one of my favorite movies um, growing up, and just now, I, I watch it all the time, is James Cameron's The Abyss. So if you've heard of like Terminator 2 or Aliens, you know, you know James Cameron from Titanic and Avatar. One of his earlier movies was The Abyss. And The Abyss is, you know, if you haven't seen it, it's an amazing movie. Um, like the, the cinematography is great. They filmed it kind of underwater in these like huge like tanks. Um, I feel like they can't make this movie again um, unless they use like special effects. So the practical effects in it, if you're a practical effects junkie, it is amazing. Um, but one of the characters in the, in the movie without spoiling things, um, he carries a P226, all right? He's one of the Navy SEALs and he carries a P226. And, you know, I love the movie so much, and I just love that it featured the P226. That movie is part of the reason, probably why I like the P226. That and probably nothing fancy talking about it as well. Um, but I never knew what P226 he had. I knew the movie um, was filmed kind of in the late 80s, so it had to be a West German. But 
the movie that I had was like on VHS, it was hard to tell, you know, what it was. Okay, we'll cut to the end of 2023. They re-released the movie in a upscaled 4K version. And now you can actually watch the movie. You can zoom in. You can see all the markings on the pistol, right? This is something that has never been seen. Maybe the only time you can see it was when the movie was in theaters, all right? But it's only there for a flash. <laughs> so what did I do? Um, when I saw the when I saw the movie come out, I was like, "Oh, that's cool!" You know, the movie's out in 4K. I've already got my West German, you know, 226. This is, you know, I had two of them already at that time. I was like, "Oh, this is nice." But then, much to my surprise, I watched it. I was like, "Wait, wait, 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 wait!" It's one of those older SIGs with the the slide cut. I was a little disappointed. I was like, "Wait, I don't have the same kind of PT26 that the character has." And I started going on the hunt. So this was like about four or five months ago. I start looking for another P226 West German with the slide cut like this. And then, because the movie is in such high resolution, I was I was starting to look at the markings, right? So one thing that I noticed in the markings of the movie was that the gun, well, sorry, let's let this focus. The gun had a Sig Sauer Sig Arms Inc. Herndon, Virginia import marking, right? It's very, very hard to see the marking. And I, and my fiance like kind of looked at it. I asked, I asked her, I'm like, look at it. I didn't, I didn't try to prompt her. I'm like, what does this say? Does it say Herndon or Tyson's Corner, which was another importer of SIGs at the time with the same um, slide cut. And we both kind of said it's Herndon, but maybe with like 80% confidence. Okay, so that was a little disappointing. I didn't know exactly what I was looking for. In order to start my search, I needed to know exactly what I wanted. So I wanted the markings to be the same as the movie, even though you couldn't see the markings fully. Okay, the second clue on the gun was the serial number. So on SIGS forums, you can look up the serial number of other people's SIGS, and they will have it um, related to the date code that's on the bottom of the slide. So if you remember, I said this date code was a KE, or I'm not, I don't know if I told you that, but this has a date code of KE, 1994. This has a date code of 1987. So in the movie, there's a scene where the 226 is like very close to the frame, and if you pause it at the right frame, you can make out the serial number. And the serial number on the gun was a 163 dash, like, I think it was 64 something. Um, so by seeing that, I saw it was a 163, I cross checked it with the forum and I saw that this would be in the era of 1987. And the people um, that had the gun, it um, there are two serial numbers that bracketed the one in the movie, and it was a Herndon, Virginia gun. So we were 80% sure that it was Herndon by just looking at it, but with the serial number, we confirmed that it was Herndon, Virginia. So I knew what I was going to look for. I'm looking for a West German gun that was imported by Herndon, Virginia. You know, that seems pretty good. I know that Herndon had a lot of um, slides um, or had a lot of imported guns at the time. Um, but there was one more complication. Sig Sauer at the time transitioned from this angle cut to the more rounded cut in 1987. So Tyson's Corner and Herndon, there was a transition from those two towns in Virginia of who was importing the gun in 1987. And then at the end of 1987, they transitioned from the slide cut to the rounded cut, the, the, the angled cut to the rounded cut. Okay. So the dilemma was there's only like a six month period, you know, around six months where these guns were produced with the same slide and the import marking. Okay, so this is what collectors do, right? If you're bored, you know, this channel is not for you because this is all about um, collecting things and, and paying attention to things that do not matter at all. But, you know, they matter to the people that are collecting it. So that's why I'm telling you about it. So I was looking on Gun Broker, I was looking on Arms List, I was looking on Guns America, Guns International, Cabela's, every site that had used guns, I was just searching through it. Every, every morning, drink my coffee, 
go look at the things that were newest on Gunbroker. So I started by looking at PT26 West Germans, but then I, I broadened my search because there were things that fell through the crack. I just looked for PT26. And I, between uh, the months of like March to now, I've basically seen every PT26 on Gunbroker, every used one. And I did not find what I was trying to look for, right? My filter was too much to find this slide cut and the Herndon. Okay, two weeks ago, I was just frustrated. I'm like, I'm never gonna get this gun. Like, how rare are they? I saw one on arms list like a month ago that was selling for $1,200. And they, um, that gun had been heavily modified but it said it came with all the original parts. I was not willing to, you know, change all the parts out, um, even though I know I'd disassemble this gun, but I was just worried that someone had kind of messed with the gun too much. I don't want to buy it from someone that like changed everything on the gun. I just want one that's kind of in the stock condition. So I was thinking about buying that one, but before I bought, or before I was thinking about buying it, I was like, let me just Google search PT26 West German for sale. Now, if you buy guns online, um, gun broker is usually a place to go for like used guns. Um, Google never really has the things I want. And usually when they have them, like they're out of stock already. Cause it's just like an old like website that had them sold, like had the PT26 selling for like, like two or three years ago. And generally when a website is selling a PT26, like the old ones, they usually got a big batch of them. And a lot of these batches are not coming from police, um, Police departments are coming from overseas, like Israel, and I didn't want one with a with a you know nasty uh, matrix dot import marking. Okay, so I saw on the site there was a site that I saw it was Legacy Collectibles. If you don't know what Legacy Collectibles are, um, they have a YouTube channel. It's it's a great channel. They do a lot of unboxings of like used guns. I thought they only sold like World War II guns, World War One guns, and a bunch of Lugers. Um, but they had a P226 on there. And when I looked at it, I was like, well, you know, that's a nice P226 and their prices are actually reasonable. It wasn't gun broker. It was just like their listed price. Um, so I just decided, well, maybe they have more P226s. And then I saw this gun in the red box and I like freaked out. I like pulled my credit card out right away. I like double checked everything. I'm like, all right, let me look at the parts. Like, let me make sure that like, you know, everything looks good from the pictures. And I impulsively, I mean, not really impulsively because I've been looking for it. I just, I bought it right away. So I paid $795 for this. I would say paid probably a little bit more, but I was going to kick myself if I didn't buy it. I had been searching for so long, wasting so much time looking for it. Um, I decided to buy it. And I, I don't know. I also, it's kind of fun to do this hunt because like I, ha I have been a little bit like sad that like after I bought it, I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do now? So there, there will always be a next gun, but um, I ended up buying this. So what did it come with? Um, this gun wasn't exactly stock conditioned when I got it. It did come with a pair of Meprolite um, adjustable sights. These are the ML2110 sights. I think I looked it up. They're like $100, $110. They're nice sights. They're adjustable. Um, there's still some tritium glow on them, but I just wanted my gun to be stock. I like these iconic original sights on the T26. It also came with two grips. Now, these look like original grips. They're not. These are made by Hogue. I actually have a set of these on another 226. Um, these are G10 grips. They're actually really nice. Now, they don't fully replicate the grips. I mean, they're, first is a different material, and the milling is slightly different. But if you wanted a gun that kind of looked like it, these are pretty good. Now, Remember that I was talking about that stupid 40th anniversary with the aluminum grips. They come with aluminum grips. They're awful. Why don't they get the G10 grips? The G10 grips look way better um, and they feel a lot better. But anyway, I don't need these grips probably, so I'm probably going to sell them and they're worth like $100 or something like that. So with the Mepper lights, if I can sell those for $100 and the grips for $100, I could probably make $200 back and I'll have this gun for 600, which I think is a smoking deal. And it's a great deal for me because I've been looking for this gun uh, forever. So anyway, that's kind of the story about this gun. There's not really that much to it. I cleaned this gun um, recently. There was a lot of grease in it. Um, and then the previous owner did make a few modifications. I don't know if Sig did it or the previous owner. Um, 
the hole near the breech block pin is a little boogered up. Um, and then on the inside, it's got a non-stock um, hammer strut and spring and housing. Um, I have all the original parts on this SIG, um, but this SIG has some unoriginal parts. And I think on the grips, they actually had milled the grips, which was a little disappointing. Um, but externally, you know, this is exactly what I've, uh, what I've been looking for. So anyway, that, that's the story of this gun, kind of the um, journey that I, you know, I kind of take when I look for these guns. Um, I don't really like just buying things uh, right away. I like searching for things. I like the hunt. The hunt is really fun for me. Um, and when I stop, you know, wanting guns or stop like looking for collectibles, it'll be a sad day. I, I won't have things to do. I spend a lot of time doing it and researching these things. So if you have any questions about, you know, a gun that you're looking for, maybe a particular P226, leave a comment. I would be happy to help and I won't scoop you, I promise. I will help you um, find something if, you, if you're if you looking for it. Um, and also, uh, you know, if you like these sort of videos, please subscribe. Recently, we just hit over 1,000 subscribers. I think I'm at 110 subscribers. So for anyone that's subscribed, um, over the past year and to the subscribers that come back and actually watch there's actually a you know like a 10 or 15 percent of you guys who actually have notifications on which is kind of crazy um sometimes when i put videos out you guys are like watching it within the first 10 minutes giving it a like and things like that really really appreciate that um it's it's it feels good to um have people that like the same things that you like so you know any interaction in the chat you know that that would be that'd be awesome so with that thanks for watching and i hope you have a good rest of your day take care bye